It's, it's wonderful. All right, let's go back into the scripture again tonight, to Romans chapter number eight. I'm excited about preaching. I love preaching. Uh, I had uh, somebody message me uh, after I preached Sunday morning, and it encouraged me, really did. Uh, every once in a while, even us old preachers need a little encouragement. Amen. I had one of the men, a uh, preacher, he, uh, he was there Sunday morning, and he, uh, he said, uh, I could have listened to that message for two hours, and I'm praying that God would uh, just give you many more years uh, if you want to do that. And I thought, it, it, it ain't a matter of want to. I want you to know, because my want to wants to. Somebody say amen. <laughs> if I ever lose that want to, I'll tell you what, I resign Sunday morning. But I want to tell you what, that want to still there. I told him I still as silly as I was when I was 27 years old when I got here. Now, my body ain't the same as it was, but I want you to know something. As long as I can put her in fifth gear, I'm going to preach. Somebody say amen. amen. I don't know how, nobody knows how long you're going to be able to do something. But I don't know what I'd do, just think that I couldn't do what I'm doing. I just hope God just takes me on out here. <laughs> Whoa, I'm glad to be here tonight. Romans chapter 8. Uh, I am in the midst of three different series. And what I'm hoping is that I don't uh, preach one of the other ones while I do this one. <laughs> I got a lot of material running through my mind. Uh, but I love Romans 8. It's a great chapter, and we're going to go on into it, but I'm going to read, Chad read the whole, ch whole chapter for me, but what I'm going to do tonight, uh, I'm going to start reading at verse 1, and I'm going to read down through to about verse 23 or 24, 24 I think. I won't get no further than that tonight, I don't believe, but let's, let's look at the passage. Verse number 1 is our theme, and we'll go into that in a moment. These verses are mighty verses. There is therefore. Now, any time, student of the Bible, you see the word therefore, what you need to do is go to the prior chapter and see what it was talking about. And this is jumping on, uh, following that thought from the last chapter. And uh, there is therefore. Now, circle this word, now. I like that word now. Uh, thank God I got heaven I'm going to one day. Thank God I'm looking for the rapture. I'm not looking for the undertaker. I'm looking for the upper taker. I'm looking to get my body changed. I, I've got that promise. But sometimes we look way down yonder at what we're going to get in heaven and we forget what we have right now. Present. Present blessings. What God has us to uh, in our lives to operate in this Christian life right now. But listen to this verse. This is awesome. There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus. What I'm trying to say to you, judgment's been lifted. I've been saved from wrath to come. I remember years ago, I... Uh, uh, I can't see the lady who used to own the business, but I was in a business up at uh, Scott Depot, and there was a whole bunch of Jehovah Witnesses there. And uh, I mean, there was a bunch of them. And I don't have no more sense that I just went up and started witnessing to them. You say, do you know you say, on and on and on and on, you know, I just, I just did. And um, I started aggravating them a little bit, I think. Uh, they had a, pol you, how many remember the Polaroid cameras? You know, little things and the things zip out? Well, they took a picture of me. I took really several pictures of me. Started, I, I become on the most wanted list of the Jehovah Witnesses. <laughs> and uh, I mean, honestly, I mean, I, and uh, I never forget, I, uh, we just started talking. They, they asked for it, so I, I give it to them. I, I let them have their say first, and then it was my turn. So I, 
I started quoting scripture like this. God was manifested in the flesh, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with, was with God, and the Word was God. I started doing that kind of quoting. And one of them, honestly, this is what she said to me. She looked me right in the face. She looked good, and she said, I just hope you go to hell. And I looked at her, and I'll never forget what I said. I said two things. So I said, number one, I can't. Then number two, I said, there is hope for you. She looked me right in the face. She got all all shook up. She said, what do you mean there's hope for you? Well, I said in y'all's Jehovah Witnesses doctrine, y'all don't even believe in hell. (laughs) That's when the Polaroid come out. Snap, snap, snap. (laughs) <laughs> I, w- I want you to know something, ladies and gentlemen. If you ever get saved and you're really saved and you've been changed by the gospel of Jesus Christ, you cannot go to hell. Condemnation has been lifted. You are now in Christ Jesus. You're a child of God now, not in the future. We have eternal life now. We're saved now. We're sealed now. We're well glory. <laughs> Well, here I go. Now, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but are after the Spirit. See, what happened, we were under the law, by the way, verse 2 said, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made us free from the law of sin and death. The law of the Bible, the, the Ten Commandments, the law uh, well, it wasn't given to save one man. Somebody help me preach. The law wasn't given to save. The law was to show you that you were a sinner, that it was a schoolmaster that you might come to Christ and see your need. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to be saved till you see your need of salvation. Amen. For what the law could not do. Now listen to this. That it was weak through the flesh. See, the law was perfect. Anything God gives is perfect. Am I right? And it's not that the law was weak, but my flesh is weak, and my flesh can't keep the law. God sent his own own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and condemned sin in the flesh. Uh, We showed you last week we have access into this freedom. Sin's been condemned. When Jesus died on Calvary, he blotted out your sin. He judged sin for you. That you don't have to die and go to hell in your sin if you trust him. Don't trust religion. Hey, don't try. Hey, by the way, look at me. I'm a Baptist, but you don't trust Baptists. You don't trust uh, Methodists. Uh, Any denomination, that denomination doesn't save you. Christ saves you. Amen. Amen. Boy, I'm preaching, huh? Let me go through a few more of these verses. That the righteousness of, of, of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For they that, that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is at enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither uh, indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Hey, look at me. You cannot do any religious act in your flesh that will please God. Amen. You cannot. And until we get to that point that we realize that we cannot please God in the flesh. Hey, baptism doesn't save you. Being confirmed doesn't save you. Being sprinkled or baptized doesn't save you. Joining the church doesn't save you. The only thing can save you is by you looking and seeing yourself a sinner and seeing Christ dying on the cross of Calvary. Your condemnation can be lifted the moment you trust him. Are we preaching? Let me, let me go on. Verse 9, but ye are in the flesh, 
but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. Well, we have the Holy Spirit. We have two natures. Well, he said we're not living by the flesh. We're living by the hope of the Holy Ghost that's in us. For so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, listen to this carefully. Look at me. Look at me. Uh, if you're in verse 9, say amen if you are. Amen. Now, I'm going to read this last verse. And I want you to listen to me, this last phrase. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Your name can be on the roll of a church. I preached that Sunday night. I hope, I, uh, I hope you got it. I hope it hit you as hard as it did me. But you hear me. The moment you get saved, the Holy Spirit comes in and knocks those walls down and gives you a new nature on the inside. And if you do not have the Holy Spirit, you're none of his. Amen. You know, these face, these religions that said, well, you've got to come to a perfect sanctification to get the Holy Spirit. That's a lie. Right. You've got to be baptized with the Spirit to get the Spirit. That's a lie. Right. You've got to speak in tongues to know you have the Spirit. That's a lie. No, you have the Holy Spirit because it was shed and brought in your heart when you placed faith in Christ. We have access into freedom. Let's go on and look. All right. Am I all right? Y'all all right? Praise God. I love reading verses. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Look at me. There are nobody in this room can live a successful Christian life living by the flesh. We need to die out to sin and be moved or directed by the Holy Ghost of God. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, that's a good question. Does he dwell in you? He that raised up Christ from the dead shall quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, here's another therefore, brethren. We are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. But if we, if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you live through the spirit, you do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Listen this, for as many that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. That's where we ended last week. We have access into freedom. There was a time, how many remember the time in your life you were locked down and locked up and you weren't free, you were in bondage, you couldn't save yourself, you couldn't get better, but thank God the moment you placed faith in Christ, he removed the shackles, and you became free. Amen. So we have access in the freedom. Now let's go to number two, and this is where we left off last week, and I'm getting into a big doctrine, and let's read probably seven more verses. That'll be all I get tonight, uh, if I get that. The Bible said, but ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Hold a minute, hold a minute. Look at me, look at me. If you're saved, why do you fear? God's not given a spirit of fear, but of sound mind. And if you are fearful, it's because you're not living according to the spirit, you're living according to the flesh. Somebody help me preach. And hold a minute. We are all subject to live after the flesh because we do have two natures and fall into free uh, or fear. But God's not. Hey, let me tell you, look at me right here. Every one of you look at me. If you have fears, fear about going to hell, fear about anything, that's not of God, and all that will do is bring you into bondage because God does not give you the spirit of fear. Somebody help me preach. Amen. But ye have, now here's what I want you to see. But ye've received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. 
Boy, I tell you, I'm, I'm getting ready to get happy. Uh, the Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs of God and join heirs with Christ. And if so that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which we shall which shall be revealed in us for the earnest expectation of the creature, verse 19, waited for the manifestation of the sons of God, for the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who hath subjected the same in hope, because the creature itself also shall be delivered from bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we now, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. But listen to this, somebody help me preach. And not only they, but ourselves, which had the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit, the redemption of the body. I'll, I'll close there. I'll stop there because I won't get all that preaching in. So number one, last week we talked about access in the freedom. Let me ask you something. Are you saved? Everybody that's saved, raise your hand high if you know it. Thank you. If you're saved, you have access in the freedom. But that's not all you got. Number two, you got, you got adoption into the family. Now, would y'all do me a favor? Hold you, hold you. Would you go to Ephesians 1 with me a moment? I want to give you something that's glorious. And the Calvinists have it all messed up, but I'll, I want to teach it properly. Go to Ephesians 1 and verse 5, and when you get there, say amen. amen. Now, we're talking about adoption. If you read Ephesians 1, it's talking about those that are in Christ. That God does not predestine anybody to be saved or lost. Right. Somebody help me preach. If you get condemned in hell, it's because you chose to go over the blood of Christ and you died in your sin. But let me show you something that God did, Chad, for us before the world began. Having predestinated us, now listen to this, unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. Now look at me, look at me, look at me. God, get this. He said, every person in this, most all of you raised your hand and said, you say, every person in this room, well, you know what God done? God predestinated those people that received Christ, those that are in him, to be adopted. That means he's going to make us an adult child. That means he adopted us in his family. Somebody help me preach. See, predestination has nothing to do with whether you go to hell or heaven. Predestination has to do with God's purpose for those that have received Christ. Y'all with me? Boy, I hope that's getting to you. Look at verse number 15. First of all, I like this. By the way, adoption takes place the moment you get saved. Right? So you're saved, then you're adopted. And verse 15 says, we have an intimacy with the Father. For ye have not received the, the spirit of the bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, rare, whereby we cry, what? Abba Father. Well, praise the Lord. Somebody, I, you know, I hope, look at me. How deep does your salvation go? How intimate is it? What kind of relationship do you have? I want to tell you what kind of relationship you should have. You call dad, you call Jesus, or God, Papa. Abba, Father. 
I remember when I was a young boy, I uh, used to get up on my, my dad's lap, and he said, I love you, boy. And we got so intimate. My dad loved me so much. Uh, I, I was so young when he died. I still breaks my heart. He died when I was so young. And, and I, I looked at him. I said, Dad, I love you. And we were so intimate. I want you to know, child of God, God doesn't have to be way out there with you. He wants an intimate relationship with you. Hey, hey, by the way, we can come boldly to the throne of grace and find grace and help in the time of need. All we got to do is say, Papa, I need you. Woo, Papa. Well, uh, uh, some of y'all didn't get that again. Papa! So intimate. You know, sometimes we pray like God's so far off. And we get real loud and loud and like we preach when we pray. You don't have to preach when you pray. You just talk to him like you're talking to me and you. He's not hard of hearing. Some people say, well, I've got to get my praying voice. Hold it. Any voice is good. God said, if you're saved, you're connected to him. Just, exp- he wants you to experience that intimacy. Yeah, come on, Amen. Am I preaching? Amen. Man, I, God's my father. Jesus is my elder brother. Whew. Y'all with me? I, I, I preach Sunday night on really knowing you're saved because a lot of church members don't know. Many, many will say, Lord, Lord, in that day have I prophesied in thy name. It frightens me that a lot of people who say they're saved don't have an intimate walk with Christ. Something, how many believe something's missing if you don't? I woke up this morning, went through my routine, bathed, took pills, went and got my Bible. And I started having him talk to me for four or five chapters. Read me some Psalms and read me a proverb. And he talked to me. And after he talked to me, it was my turn. I started talking to him. See, he talks to us through his word, and we talk to him uh, through our Holy Spirit that we go to him and say, I have a father. And I said, I'll be honest with you this morning, and it ain't like this every morning. Most times, I'm guilty, and I hope you're, oh, you're guilty too. We go to God, I want you, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that, I want this. But this morning, Nancy, it wasn't like that. I started just worshiping him. How many believe you can worship at home? I just started worshiping. Man, I, start, I, just, I just started saying, God, I'm glad you're my father. And I, I started telling him how much I love him, how thankful I was that he saved me, how glad I am to be a child of God. And I won't be honest with you, I started getting closer and closer, and I, it was like he was right there at my fingertips, and we were just in such communion. By the way, if you're a child of God, you can live that way. He wants you to have an intimate fellowship, and if you don't, it's sad. Look at verse 16. Secondly, not only do I have... Uh, uh, intimacy with the Father, but I have involvement in the fellowship. Look at verse 16. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Now look at me. I'll tell you how you can know you're saved if the Holy Spirit assures you you are saved. How many? Jeff, right? Rich, right? He... His spirit 
gives me assurance that I'm a, I'm a child of God. I'm a member of the body. I'm a part of the bride. Woo! I'm, I'm in the building. Woo! Somebody ought to get happy. I'm glad that that Holy Spirit that I got the moment I got saved gives me assurance that I'm a child of God. I'm in the family. I, I, I don't... Blake is, where'd Blake go? He leave? Where'd he go? He must have left. Uh, do you sing this? I don't know who sings it. I want to sing it so bad right now. I can't hardly stand myself. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. You know that song? Go hit a lick just to help me preach. Come on. Get you a microphone. Come on. I'm going to slow my preaching down. I think, hey, I put Allison on the spot. You might as well go on the spot too. By the way, you're old as I am now. Come on, step up. <laughs> Sing a little bit for us, Lois. Come on, let's worship a little bit. We're, we're I'm in. so glad I'm a part Are you? of the family of God. I've been Worship a little bit. Let's do it together a little bit, Lois. Help us. Come on. Come on. I'm so Come on. Glad I'm a part of the family. Are you glad? Can you worship him a little bit? Look at 17. She's going back to the. Somebody help me preach tonight. I, you said you're preaching different. I can't help it. I'm enjoying myself tonight. You ought to be too if you're saved. Look here. You were on this part, so you're going to get back here. Listen. And if children, then heirs. And heirs of God, verse 17. And join heirs with Jesus or with Christ. Woo! Listen, number three. We have an inheritance of favor. See, what happened when we got saved, we lost all the rights of the old family. And now we have complete privileges of a new family, a family of hope, a family of heaven, a family of, uh, well, glory, <laughs> a joy, a family of abundance. Somebody help me preach. Uh, ooh, the old life has been wiped out and we have a new life now you hit that again please right in that area sing it I'm so glad sing it church
let me say, let me give you a few more things before I close. And if children then heirs of God and join heirs with Christ, and so that we suffered with him, that we may also glorified, be glorified together. We're heirs of faith. <laughs> Regardless of what everybody else does, we're children of God by faith, not by the law, not by the flesh, not by what we do, but because of who we are through Christ. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Oh, my. He had those complete privileges. That old life, that life of the flesh, you don't have to live it anymore. Live by the new man. There's a faith. Now, listen, man. Now, I want you to really be careful. If you're not living that joy, here's one of two things that's wrong. Either you haven't really had a relationship with God and you've never really been saved and all you got is church membership or you have become carnally minded and you're living after the flesh and the flesh can't please God and uh, every time John Smith steps out and I have and I'm sure not proud of it. I, I don't think anybody here would be. And get in the flesh. I don't please him. And I'm miserable. Any of y'all ever been miserable since you've been saved? Can I ask you a question? Was it when you were in the flesh and living after the flesh? Or was it after the spirit? The spirit will never make you miserable. No, it's because... For whatever reason we do this, we yield to our flesh. And when we yield to our flesh, we lose all kind of joy, all kinds of fellowship. All, don't we? How many of y'all, can, can I ask y'all a question? I'm only going to get one point done anyway. Can I ask you a question? When you get in the flesh, do you feel as miserable as I do? I mean, I feel miserable. Because see, a Christian wasn't designed to live that way. He has given you the Holy Spirit so you can live differently. Now, hold a minute. If you're constantly living at your flesh, it could be that you've never been saved. And you better admit it and get saved. Or... There are times where we quit yielding to the Holy Spirit and our flesh controls us. How many times have you opened your mouth and said something stupid and regretted it? That wasn't the Holy Spirit. That was your flesh. And God doesn't want you to live like that. You're children of God. You're heirs of God. Are we preaching? You've been adopted. Hold a minute. Now, I'm almost done. We're going to sing a little bit more, Lois. We'll give the invitation. Now, listen carefully, Chad. When I was born again, Chad, is this right? When I was born again, I became a baby in Christ, right? A baby can't inherit anything. But the moment I was born again, I was also adopted. And he gave me adult status that I can be heirs of the promise and I can enjoy the benefits of Jesus Christ. I'm not walking real good, but I'm about ready to get moving right now. I'm telling you, don't you I'm all right. I'm holding on, okay? I'm excited. You know what? I'm teaching like this because I want you to be excited. I don't want you to live below your privileges. I don't want you to live defeated and sad 
Why should you if you're a child of God? Why should you if you're in the family of God? Why should you live like that? If you're adopted into the family, why should you live defeated when you don't have to? Bow your head with me. I'm done. How many right now, you know that you know you're saved? Again, raise your hand if you know. Thank you. If you're not sure you're saved, Made a, maybe you made a profession, but it wasn't real. You say, preacher, I, I'm not sure I'm saved. I go back and forth with it. But I want to know. Would you just slip up your hand and say, pray for me? I'm not sure, but I want to know. Raise them up high. God bless that hand. Somebody else? Just say, preacher. Or if you have been saved and you're not living the way you ought to live, you know you're saved, but you're backsliding, raise your hand and say, pray for me back sitting on God. Thank you. I see that hand. Thank you. I see that hand. Now, here's what you do if you're back sitting. Come up here tonight. If you confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. I want you to stand. and Everyone that's back sitting, raise your hand. If you're lost and you raise your hand, you come forward. If y'all just want to come up and tonight you're saved, but you just like to come up, you've been touched by the service and say, just tell him here at the altar, I love you. Would you do it tonight? Father, you touch us. Let's keep singing. And Lord, folks, come in Jesus' name. Amen.